or still touch the same to the robot in this specific case? Just maintain the joints where they are. Okay. Now the question could be why do we need to have such a task? Yes. yes so. uh, the reason why we need to have such a task is that in simulation it may not be a problem if you remove it. Let me try. We set it to zero. Mm -hmm. And then we, we run. <coughs> yeah, we should make the simulation last longer to see what happens after. Uh, so here we can increase the simulation time. Let's see what happens. So it has reached but it does not have to set itself. the configuration, but since you're not telling it what, what you would like it to do with the rest of the degrees of freedom, it does whatever it wants. Okay. So the, the poster task basically helps to stabilize the whole system. Because if you just set the end defector task, you're not you don't specify enough about the motion to have a unique motion as an output. You have infinitely many yes. motions that satisfy... But, but speaking about the motion, in theory, if you want to stabilize it, let's say, with stabilize what means this, uh, you, should know, you should know a priori how your posture is, or would you like the posture to be? No, I mean, if you do, Oh, that's okay, you can you can use it. But actually what we typically do is that we don't know the whole body posture. We just know the center of mass position. Or in this case, we didn't know the whole joint configuration for reaching. We just knew the end effector position for reaching. So for the posture, you just set a reference that is roughly close to what what you would like to see, but it doesn't need to be compatible with the main task. Oh, okay. As I was saying before, tasks are, are typically in conflict. Yes. And then which one dominates is, is basically decided by the weights that you set. So basically, hmm? as an example, you want the, the back to be straight. So exactly. Be straight on the rotation of the exactly. that, uh, part of the robot. Yeah. That that will be just uh, yeah. a robot which is nice nicer to see. Nicer to see, exactly. But if you don't constrain the arms, they will go on. They will start moving. Even however, if the robot reaches the I don't know the, the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we can actually do that. I mean, at the end of the class, we will have the robot walking. We could try to remove. The, the posture task for the arms and we are going to see the arms that are going to probably oscillate maybe go unstable I don't know I haven't tried but yeah that's the reason why we always have the, the posture task for the joints <laughs> So in theory, we are running out of time. Um, there are other two scripts that you can play with. I mean, you don't need to, to look at any more theory to, to understand and play with these scripts. Let me briefly show them to you, then we can play a bit with them together next time, or you can enjoy them during the afternoon or the weekend. <coughs> these two scripts are exercise two. Which is this one. 
If you run it, you're gonna see a, a humanoid robot. We should be moving its center of mass left and right. Like that. And then you're going to see some plots of the center of mass trajectory, swallowing a sinusoid in the lateral direction. Here you can see the, the acceleration. So as usual, you have the real, the reference, and the desired. And here you have the velocities. So that's fun. You can play a bit with the frequency of the sinusoid, the amplitude of the sinusoid. And then once you're done with that, well, if you, if you open the, the configuration file, which is this Romeo Conf, you can also play with the gains and the weight. Here you have the, the weight of the center of mass, of the feet, of the joint posture, and the force regularization task. And you also have the gains for each task. Contact, feet, center of mass and posture. You can play with them to see how it affects uh, the behavior of the system. And the really fun script is the exercise three, a biped balance with uh, GUI. This I'm really proud of. I did it when I was sick a few months ago. I wanted to have fun. And it creates, again, the same humanoids there, balancing. But what's, what's funny is that you have also this GUI here. So first of all, I suggest you to, to click this button. Maybe you cannot see it from, from there, but it says toggle wireframe, which basically is going to show the interior of the robot. And the reason is that if you do that, you're going to see that there is a ball inside the robot which represents the targets, as usual, for the center of mass. And there is another ball in the same spot, so you don't see it right now, which is the real center of mass. And using this GUI, you can move the targets and see in real time how the robot moves. So for instance, here I can move the center of mass left and right, and I see the robot that moves. Okay, so it's reactive. You can move it left and right, you can move it up and down. If you move it down, you move it up, you move it down, oh yeah. No problem. There are no torque limits, of course, otherwise it would fall. <laughs> it's a very powerful robot. And another, you can also break the contacts. Of course, if you break the contacts, while the center of mass is there, the robot is just gonna fall. Maybe I can do it just to show you, break contact right foot. And then at a certain point, uh, the problem becomes unfeasible and so the program stops. So you can play quite a lot with this. At least I know that I did play quite a lot with this. Also, my daughter loves it. Every time I play with this, she wants to join. And there is another feature here. You have these three text uh, boxes where you can add some numbers. It says COM velocity X, Y, and Z. And then you have a button which says uh, push robot COM. So basically, it simulates a push of the robot by instantaneously changing the, the velocity of the center of mass and the change is specified by you through these boxes. For instance, if I say that I want to push the robot with a velocity of uh, 20 centimeter per second in the x direction, so x is forward, y is lateral and z is upward, and I click, I get the robot slightly pushed forward. You saw it? Then I can be a bit meaner and push it stronger with a 50 centimeter per second and you get this kind of movements. You can do the same lateral, upward, downward, 
which direction you want. And another thing you can do is that you can, if you move the center of mass laterally, of 10 centimeters, um, then you can break the contact with the opposite foot. Like here, the center of mass is on the left foot, so I can break the contact on the right foot by clicking on this button. And then I can move the right foot, for instance, upward. And all of this is, is basically generated just by solving the least square program that we have seen in these days. So, yeah, you can generate quite some interesting movement already with this simple least square program and this simple reactive controller. Of course, there are limitations to this kind of control and approach. You cannot generate walking, for instance, just by using this. We're going to see that more next week. And we're going to start talking about optimal control next week to basically address the limitations of this approach. But already with this, you can have quite a lot of fun and play and generate movements. Okay, I think that's enough for today. But the contract yeah. wasn't more than as bilateral. How is it possible to break the maybe I, I need to solve this step? Uh, the contact is model as, as bilateral, meaning that uh, we, are, we are saying that the, the contact point shouldn't move at all, but it's still unilateral in the sense that the contact forces can only push, not pull. So all the movements that you get out of this are physically consistent. You cannot get a movement where the robot is, is pulling on, on a contact. You can break it just by removing it from, from the problem. Ah, yeah, because the problem is calculated. The problem, the problem is, is updated every millisecond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when, when you click that button, you have inside the script the code for removing the contact. And then at that point, basically, the force becomes zero and the motion constraint is removed from the problem. So you can start moving it. Then you can reinsert it. So you could actually generate a, a very slow and awkward walking motion with this GUI if you want. And then you're gonna see, you're gonna think, okay, I need something better to make it work for you. Yeah. So you're